May his berakah be on us in the Shem of Yahushua HaMashiach. Abba Yah, we pray for all the Kodeshim and for all those listening to our voice and uh, those who are watching us on a later date. We ask that you will incline their ears to the truth. We ask that you will give us understanding in our hearts, Abba, that you will give us a clean spirit, a clean ruach, a clean heart, and a, a mind to understand the things of Yahuwah. We pray this in the Shem of Yahushua HaMashiach. We pray for all of the Kodeshim that are coming in, that are beginning to know the name and do the Shabbat and keep the mitzvot and, and follow Yahushua in the Shem of Yahuwah. We give you thanks, Abba Yam, and we ask for you to be with us today. In the Shem of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Manishma, what's up? Hallelujah. Anashim Mishporka Yasharel. Shalom, everybody. Mashalom to the men, Mashalom ka to the women, and we greet you all in the Ahab of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And if you're tuning in, if you're watching this by pre-recorded already on YouTube, uh, the edited version, a version of it, we thank you for tuning in. If you would like to join in, please email me on the e email address on our website and uh, on the on the links, and then I would send you some material and communicate with you about the process of coming in and joining in on the fellowship. Okay, and we love the live Zoom podcast that eventually becomes on youtube edited thank you for tuning in we have a great session for you we have we're going to be sharing on baruch 2 the 80 plus chapters of course we're not going to finish it all today but we're going to do our best to take our time because there's some great uh revelation impartation and understanding about what happens when we pass away where do we go uh uh, which we don't want to go, but where we want to have his unmerited favor and compassion upon us to, to, to be wooed closer in a more deeper relationship of Yahushua. Hallelujah. We praise Yah for this great opportunity. You can see there eliahuchannel.com and you can go to that and then get our link to eliahuchiles at gmail.com to uh, gmail. So I can email with you, communicate with you if you want to come in and join the session, okay? So now without any delay, any further, uh, we want to go ahead and go to the page. Give me a moment. We're reading out of the Et Sefer. All right, chapter one, the book of Bar Baruch. And it came to pass in the 25th year of Yochan Yahu, king of Yehuda, that the word of Yahuwah came to Baruch, the son of Neriyahu, and said to him, Have you seen all the pe all that this people are doing to me, that the evils which these two tribes which remained have done are greater than those of the ten tribes which were carried away captive? For the former tribes were forced by their kings to commit sin, but these two themselves, these two of themselves have been forcing and compelling their kins, their kings to commit sin. For this reason, behold, I bring evil upon this city and upon its inhabitants, and it shall be removed from before me for a time. And I will scatter this people among other nations that they may do good to the other nations. And my people shall be ch chastened, and the time shall come when they will seek for the pro prosperity of their times. For and, and I have go ahead, go ahead and expound on that if you want to. I notice, brother, it's you know it says that that the Ye the Yehuda and the half tribe of Minyamin have forced their king to commit sin. You know, right. I mean, it was right. So it was the people before who were setting up all these idols under every green tree, and the Torah, the the um, 
the traditional part that we call the Torah, you'll see that in there where, where there's these, these um, different people uh, that live in these places and they set up like these totem poles and they worship those uh, other mighty ones. But here it's saying that it's the opposite. That the that the that the um that the people are forcing the kings to do this thing and right. to worship other mighty ones. So the kings want to be Kodesh, I guess, and, and they're not doing that. Yeah. It says, For I have I have said these things that you to you that you may bid Yermiyahu and all those that are like you to retire from this city. For your works are to this city as a firm pillar and your prayers as a strong wall. So back in these days, I mean, the whole world, even like today, it was no different. The whole world has gone astray. Everybody, everybody in all the different parts of the, of the, of the world were worshiping and doing child sacrifice and just like they are today, today they're doing the same thing. So the Native Americans here were building totem poles and worshiping their deities. And in every society, <laughs> it was like that also. Okay, in the English society, Spanish, in the whatever, Chinese, whatever it may be. Anyway, so let's keep on going. And it says, uh, uh, chapter number three, and I said, oh, Yahuwah, my... Eloah, I don't want to say that word. Have I come into the word, unto the world for this purpose that I might see the evils of my mother? Not so, my Eloah. If I have found favor in your sight, first take my ruah, that I may go to my fathers and not behold the destruction of my mother. This kind of sounds the same as the prayer that. That Moshe was praying. Moshe was praying, uh, was asking Abba to take him and not to let him see the destruction of the people. Because right. Yahuwah was ready to destroy the people and said to Moshe, look, let me make a more powerful nation out of you instead of using these people who have, who have denied me, who have rejected me 10 times. Ten times since they left, they rejected. So, so uh, it, it was going to be a done deal. But Moshe interceded, and and that didn't happen. And he had some similar words, just like just like the way that Baruch is speaking here, that I may go to my fathers and not behold the destruction, the destruction of my mother, which is of my people, for two things vehemently constrain me, for I cannot behold the evils, for I cannot resist. And my soul, moreover, cannot behold the evils of my mother. He's talking about the people. But one thing I will say in your presence, O Yahuwah, th what therefore will there be after these things? For if I destroy, for if you destroy your city and deliver up your land to those that hate you, how shall the name of Yasharel be again remembered or how shall one speak of your of your esteem or to whom shall that which is in your torah be explained or shall the world return to its nature of aforetime and the age revert to primal primal evil silence and shall the multitude of the souls be taken away and the nature of man not again be named? And where is all that which you say to Moshe regarding us? So it's basically, you know, um, he's praying this prayer because Yah, he sees that Yah is destroying the people, scattering them, that, um, that you know, that all the nations may say, well, where is this mighty one of Israel? You know, uh, uh, Yahuwah has done away with them all, but Yah is leaving a remnant on the Aretz as it is today. There is a remnant. So we're, we're to chapter number four. And it says, And Yahuwah said to me, This city shall be delivered up for a time, and the people shall be chastened during a time. 
for a time, during a time, and the world will not be given over to oblivion. So there's still going to be right ruling on the earth. It's not going to be totally destroyed. You know, um, he's not going to give the 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 world over uh, to total destruction. Okay, and it says, "Do you think that this is that city of which I said on the palms of my hands have I graven you? This building now built in the midst is not that which is revealed with me." That which was prepared beforehand here from the time when I took counsel to make uh, paradise and showed it to Adam before he sinned. But when he transgressed the commandment, it was removed from him also as also paradise. And after these things, I showed it to my servant Abraham by night among the portions of the victims. And again, also, I showed it to Moshe on Mount Sinai when I showed to him the likeness of the tabernacle of all his vessels. And now, behold, it is preserved with me also as also paradise. Go, therefore, and do as I command you. Okay, the chapter number five. And I answered and said, so then I am... I am destined to grieve for Zion, for your enemies will cause will come to this place and pollute your sanctuary and lead your inheritance into captivity and make themselves Adonim, masters of those whom you have loved, and they will depart. And they will depart again to the place of their idols and will boast before them. And what will you do for your great name? And Yahuwah said to me, my name and my esteem are to all eternity and my judgment shall maintain its right in its own time. And you shall see with your eyes that the enemy will not overthrow Zion, nor shall they burn Jerusalem, but be the ministers of and of the judge for a time. So the destruction of, of Yerushalayim was not yet. They were just being, um, for a time, being placed in captivity. But, but do go and do whatsoever I have said to you. And I went and took Yermiyahu and Adu and Sir, Sirayahu and Yavish and Gadol, Gadol Yahu and all the honorable men of the people, and I led them to the valley of Kidron, and I narrated to them all that had been said to me, and they lifted up their voice and all wept. And see, and we sat there and fast and fasted until the evening. And it came to pass on the morrow that lo, the army of the God. The Kazdaim surrounded the city, and at that and at the time of the evening, I I Baruch left the people, and I went before, and I went forth and stood by the oak, and I was grieving over Zion and lamenting over the captivity which had come upon the people, and lo, suddenly a strong ruach raised me and bore me aloft over the wall of Jerusalem. And I beheld, and lo, four, four Malachim standing at the four corners of the city, each of them holding a torch of fire in his hands. And another Malachim began to descend from the Shamaim and said to them, Hold your lamps and do not light them till I tell you. For I am first sent to speak a word to the Arets and to place in it what Yahuwah Sebaot has commanded me. So there, there's four Malachim, and they're about to, to put a torch to Yerushalayim, and, but um, the, another Malachim descends down into the Aretz and tells them to, to hold on. And another, uh, 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 so then, so now this is, this is verse number seven, and I saw him descend into the Kadosh of Kadosh, 
and take from thence the veil and the and the kadosh ark and the and the uh, seat of favor and the two tables and the kadosh raiment of the priest and the altar of incense and 48 precious stones wherewith the priest was adorned and all the kadosh vessels of the tabernacle verse number 8 and he spoke to the earth with a loud voice aretz 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 hear the word of el eloa and receive what i commit to you and guard them until the last times so that when you are ordered you may restore them so the strangers may not get possession of okay, them okay stop there for a minute do you guys see this you see Nothing can happen on earth unless it's happening in the spirit realm. They haven't, the, those people have not entered the people. They had torched it. But the Father's going to take all the Kodesh things physically out of there. Right. And then the messengers are going to torch it. They're going to torch it. He, he right. said, I will destroy this place. He's not going to give the esteem and honor to to the Babylonians. He's not going right. to give it to them. They're going to walk in. The wall's going to come down by a messenger. They didn't send all these missiles of boulders to do it. It's going to fall. And they're going to praise their, their Elohim that helped them. And then when they go in there, they're going to find things burning already. You know what I right. mean? And and of course they're going to they're going to claim the esteem. But according to this book, which the Rebbe's don't want you to hear this. They don't want you to hear that Yahuwah destroyed the city. He destroyed the Kodesh place. And he took the ark and all the places and hid it for a time in the future. It's very awesome right. what we're reading here. Right. He took the, think about that. He took the ark and hid it for a time in the future. What time is that? That's right. Now? Now? Now the Ark of the Covenant has been found. They tried to go in there and take it, and six or seven men died. And they, they finally sealed, sealed it back sealed, up. They sealed it they up. Sealed, with some they sealed the wall up and everything because there's nobody Kodesh yet that can go in there and even and even even dwell in the midst of. So so the so uh, I I just want to go to something real quick. So there's a guy called Ron Wyatt. I don't know if how many people are listening that know who this guy is but anyways i truly believe that he was a humble man and that and that uh that the ark of the covenant was found by him and his sons not, not well uh, yah use him because yah can use anybody i don't care if you're black white green purple blue whatever yah yah uses whomever he wishes you cannot we cannot tell yah that you can't use a a Korean or a Mexican or an Ethiopian, he's going to use whoever he wants to. Okay. And this, these guys, I believe dug out, Yahuwah allowed them to dig out where the Ark of the Covenant is at. Okay. So then they had these, so then, so then they, when they found out that he had found the Ark of the Covenant, first of all, they had this, this guy with him, this little Arab guy who crawled up inside of there and Ron said he, when he saw whatever he saw in there, he came out of there bug-eyed. His eyes were this big around, and he ran off and said, I'm never coming back here again. Okay, he had At least this guy had the wherewithal to recognize that he wasn't supposed to be in there. Okay, For whatever reason, Yahuwah didn't want him in there. So, But now you get these other guys who think that they're Kodeshim, who believe they're Kodeshim, they're, they were rabbinical they were Jews. They claimed to be Levi. Right. They think they're Kodeshim. That's what I'm trying to say without saying that. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, they think they're Kodeshim because they think they're part of the lineage of the Zadoks and stuff like that. But they're not. Okay. And so, so the Zadoks and all. Anyways. I don't, so they, they go inside of there to go and they want to pull the Ark out. The, uh, the Ark of the Covenant out of there. Then it's in there. But they die. They try six times. And they said that six different men died. 
But I believe it was a more, uh, anyways, I'm not going to get into it, but people die trying to get this thing out of there because they're not Kodeshim. You cannot touch that. And they, they, did it when, they did it when Ron Ryan was back in the United States. So they had to call him and send him a ticket because he was low on funds. You better come back here and seal that place up because you no, know, you got to go in there with body bags, with a rope, and drag yeah. our guys out of there. <laughs> yeah, because they couldn't get, they couldn't do it. Ron Wyatt uh, lived in the United States of America, and you, you who said this is the completeness of the nations. So then, you know, who's to say? That he's not of some kind of a lineage that Yahuwah allowed him to go in there. And he was also, he, the people failed to say, Christians don't want to claim it, but he was right. a commandment keeper Shabbat. He was a seventh-day right. Adventist. People don't like to say that. Adventist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't and want to say that. That's right. It was the, because it you, was only you know why the, it's not part of their agenda. What go did ahead, you say, uh, Richard. Only the Levites were even had the authority to carry the ark, but even only within the Levites, there's only certain families who were even allowed to bear it. And so evidently the, this guy was not of that lineage. Yeah. Or the, whoever or whoever he mentioned that, that had died trying to get to it, you know, evidently they're, they're not of the right authority <laughs> and they didn't do it proper because there's a the proper way of carrying it where they had to put it on the poles. Right. If they weren't doing that properly, just try to pick it up, then... Well, they yeah, just went in there and peeked, you know, and they died. Because they, yeah. they, the hole was only enough room for one person at a time. So they would have to bring a back hole and do major construction because there's a cemetery right above it, the cave. You know what I mean? They would have to do major construction and put steel columns and beams to hold everything up to make the hole big enough that the Zadok Koeni can carry it out. You know what I mean? On poles. Yeah, and it's probably extremely heavy, too, with those big old tablets in there of stone. I mean, they're probably gold, pretty big stone. Of yeah. Gold. gold, yeah. So I bet that's no easy task, even if you did have the authority to, to bear it. I mean, Ain't going to be no wimpy uh, uh, Jewish rabbi from Israel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I tell my I tell my friends when we talk about the days of old when they sword fight. Those guys had Popeye arms. It wasn't biceps. Or it was like 18, yeah. 19 inch arms. You know what I mean? It was wow. the, the, the to have you their upper arm was probably a little 17, 18 inches, but their forearm was probably 18 and 20s, man. No forearms. And their legs were probably huge too. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're, you're a sword fighter. Your body proportions are different, you know, completely different. Yeah. So uh, I, all I'm, what I was trying to, all I'm saying is that these people, I mean, um, um, Ron Wyatt that went in there and got the, got the Ark of the Covenant, I believe that they, that they did found it and they sealed it back up. It's sealed up today. Right. Okay. So. So they don't want anybody else trying to to go in there. So I don't know if Ron Wyatt sealed it up. I know I think the the Jewish the um, I'm sorry the the people in Israel in Jerusalem today the authority there uh, went ahead and sealed it up. But yeah, I went there. I was there before. I went there before they dig digged, and I visited when he put a wooden cover over it. Then I visited when they cemented it and put four bolt steel hatch. And, and they now if you go in line and look at the spot, they put this nice wooden terrace with beams right. and the palm trees on top and little chairs. You can sit on top of it. You know what I mean? You can actually right. sit on top of it. You can sit it. beside it. Or is it on top or is it beside? And the wooden terrace is all covering it. Right, you can't see it no more. No, you can't you even can't see the cement. Right, because I saw this one video on this guy. He he he, uh, he took somebody to take him. He had never seen it before, but he took somebody today, like a a, a year or two ago. And he goes, "Yeah, it's right there." And and there was like a platform with a bench and with the like he yeah, said, like yeah, a terrace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and it's somewhere down, but he kept pointing down there, but I couldn't see where it was. All all I could see is is stone and and the wooden terrace. So yeah. it's completely covered up. All right, let's keep on going. For the time comes when Yerushalayim also will be delivered for a time until it is said 
that it is again restored forever. And the and the Aretz opened its mouth and swallowed them up. You hear and that? that That's amazing. Yeah. The Babylon didn't do it. And they're going to see it in chapter 7. Babylon didn't tear that wall down. The, the no. father said, he repeatedly in Yermiyahu and in and, and, and the different uh, passages of scriptures of Yeshiyahu, I will destroy Jerusalem. That's I right. would allow Babylon to come into your city. You know, I take you no. captive. And seven is the one. He said, you don't read this in the, in the Tanakh. Look at chapter seven. Chapter 7 says, and after these things, I heard that the Malachim saying to those Malachim who held the lamps, destroy, therefore, and overthrow its wall to its foundations, lest the enemy should boast and say, we have overthrown the wall of Zion and have burnt the place of Eloah, and ye have so I believe that, that that right there where it says and burnt the place of, of El Eloah of uh, um, that that uh, that El the word El and Elohim should be Eloah El Elohim El right. Eloah and have and ye have seized the place where I had been standing before so then he didn't want the nations to say that they destroyed Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, where Yahuwah had stood before. Okay, Yahuwah brought this about, not not the not the nations. And and uh, when Yahuwah judges, man, it, it's it's uh, uh you know Abba knows how to chastise the people. Now the Malachim did as he had commanded. This is verse number uh, chapter number eight. Now the Malachim did as he had commanded them. And when they had broken up the corners of the walls, a voice was heard from the interior of the Kodesh place after the wall had fallen, saying, Enter ye enemies and come ye adversaries, for he who kept the house has forsaken it. And I, Baruch, departed, and it came to pass. So this Yahuwah speaking. That's right. <laughs> You know, saying, "Come on in and 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 uh, and and take it. Enter ye enemies and come ye adversaries, for he who kept the house has forsaken it. And I, Baruch, departed, and it came to pass after these things that the army of the Gazdim entered and seized the house and all that was around it, and they led the people away captive and slew some of them and bound." Zedekiyahu, the king, and the Melech, and sent him to the uh, Melech of Babel. This is Nebuchadnezzar, who Yahuwah used in order to take captivity of, of Jerusalem and brought them all back to Babylon. Okay. And then he didn't, he didn't just, he, he, he made the walls come down to let him in. The city was, the, the place was on fire already because the messenger for in the four corners had lanterns. It was on fire right. already. So they right. cannot get the esteem when they go back to Babylon. Oh, we did right. this, we did that. No, you didn't do none of that. And all the Kodesh garments and instruments and the, and the ark were hidden, were taken into right. a place. Now, this same man that went down there and did this uh, is the same man that Yahuwah made him be an animal and be go throughout the land for seven years. Because so Yahuwah, first of all, in the in the in the Torah, in the Tanakh, Yahuwah says that he's going to use his servant to do this. So he calls Nebuchadnezzar, who Sir. is a Kazim, his servant. He said, I will use my servant to, to do this. So he uses him. Now Nebuchadnezzar got became haughty and lifted up and 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 esteemed himself. And 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 um and Daniel Daniel had already had already nebua to the to the to um Nebuchadnezzar that hey, if you do not uh you uh if you do not give Yahuwah the esteem. You are going to roam in the wilderness 
like an animal. He was going to be in his garden, in his own garden, like an animal. They classified him as insane. And in their right. belief system, in their Babylonian belief system, if you're insane, act like an animal, nails grow, hair grow, dew on your back, meaning there was green stuff on no, his back with hair. He has fingernails in his They can't kill him, brother, according to their belief out. system. Yeah, they yeah. can't kill him. He's got to wait <laughs> him. Sit, all the demon would leave him. We'll put somebody else in charge until he wakes up again. That's their belief system. You know, it's right. crazy. So this this did happen. This this ha happened to. Him. But Yahuwah knew also. So so the dream was this. The dream was that that um, that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. This is this is before all of, or after all of this happened. After the walls came down, and 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 they marched in there and took. Bab took them back to Babylon, took them into captivity, poked out, out the eyes of the um of his of the Melek and I think his sons, or killed the killed the sons in front of him first. And they took and his eyes out, out after. Yeah, and then ga gouged out his eyes. Okay, all this stuff happened. It's, so so uh after that, the Melek had had a dream. He, and 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 when he had a dream, uh nobody knew what it was. And, and finally, they brought Daniel before before uh, 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 the Melech Nebuchadnezzar, and he told him his dream. And in the dream, he said, "He said what you saw in your head was a was a tree that grew big and far and wide, that it touched the ends of the earth, and all the animals." And all the birds nested in the tree, and the animals lived underneath the tree. Well, that's a representation of his reign, of his kingdom being throughout the whole earth. Just like today, when you have the United States of America, whose kingdom is throughout the whole earth. Uh, it's falling now. It's falling, but it was throughout the whole earth. It controlled everybody and everything. And it still does for the most part today. It still does for a huge portion. So, anyways, but then Yahuwah sent the Malakim that flew around the, 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 the tree, and Yahuwah said to the Malakim, chop it down. So boom, they chopped it down. All that was left was the stump and the root. The tree came, the, the rain came crashing down. That's Nebuchadnezzar's rain crashing down. The same that's happening today. This rain here that we live in is crashing down. Okay, because of the because of the wickedness of of the people. So, uh, any, anyways, so uh, this this is what's going on. But and Yahuwah sent that man, uh, uh, made him be like an animal for not giving him the esteem. But later on, he brings him back, and he esteems Yahuwah, and and and, and or I think his uh, Darius does too. His son, that's right. His son, his son, like two kings later. Uh, uh, throws uh, uh, Daniel in the lion's den, okay? And then he sees how Daniel saved him. He brings him, uh, uh, how Yahuwah saves Daniel and says, hey, everybody in the whole realm is going to bow down to the to the mighty one of Daniel, who's the true mighty one in his kingdom lasts from now until forever, and there is no end to it. So the whole earth has to bow down to, to Yahuwah. So that's why Yahuwah called him a servant in the first place. And okay. see, we, we, we rehearsed this to you. You read the scriptures. You know these scriptures we're brothers talking about. We rehearse it to you for the sake of people watching this on YouTube that never read Daniel. They never read right. the book of, of the Malachim 1 and 2 and the stories of the captivity and what took place. If you never read it, go read it. And it would correspond right. what we're reading here. And uh, right. and it's good to rehearse these things. Yeah. Yeah, it matches up. That's why we know. That's why in, in our Ruach inside of us comes to life when we read this. Because we're like, oh, yeah, this is what he was talking about over there. So, But it doesn't say... In the book of Daniel, or in the book of the Meleks, in the Tanakh, and in in in, in the it, it does not it, it does not say that the Malachim had lamps of fire on air on each corner. It doesn't talk about that, it, but it does here in the book of Baruch, so that you can understand. So if you read the other one, you put these two together. Okay, where Chapter are we nine. at, brother? Chapter nine. It says, "And I Baruch came and Yirmiyahu, whose heart was found pure." From sins, 
who had not been captured in the seizure of the city and went and we rent our garments and wept and mourned and fasted seven days. Let me read that again. And I, Baruch, came and Yermiyahu, whose heart was found pure from sins, who had not been captured in the who had not been captured in the seas of the city, and we rent our garments, we wept and mourned and fasted seven days. Now, brother, let me ask you something. Why does it say that? That Yirmiyahu, whose uh whose heart was had been found pure and had not been captured in the seizure. So what hey, happened to Yirmiyahu during the seizure? I'm about to show you. We're going to okay. come back to this picture, and I'll edit the time consuming that it takes to get to it. And we're going to look at some pictures here. Okay? Remember okay. I showed you a hint last week? Yeah. I gave you a hint. You see the Bula of Baruch Yahu Ben Neriah the scribe, right? Right. All right. That's what we see. It says in 1975, a clay Bula purportedly containing Baruch's seal and name appeared on the antiquity, antiqu antiquities market. So I wonder who found this. Even well, say they're going to tell it. you. They're going to tell you where they found. It. See, he it, he names uh, in the scriptures. It names the town he lived in, and where he lived. It wasn't right. in the city. The father had right. him live in an area where they could see the destruction. But it, they the the Babylonians did destroy the, those people. They were right. considered farmers. They see because when they destroy a, a kingdom or sovereignty like this. They don't. They don't pick on the poor people. They no. don't pick on the smith, the farmer, the grain, no. the guy that builds wax. Because they want to use those guys. They're going to be their laborers, and they're going right. to keep them there so they can send a ten percent offering to Babylon. They're not going to take right. them all. They want them to stay right. there and use the land and grow harvest and grow grain, send metals, send gold. So go ahead. They only, they only remove the the leadership at the top. The right. upper echelon, they take those away. Right. And, okay. and, and that's 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 the reason why that's the reason why um King uh King Darius was fooled into making this creed that through not Nebuchadnezzar but King Darius that threw Daniel in the lion's den because the excuse that he used was that. Some of the servants wanted to pray to their mighty ones still and not to King Darius's, not to the mighty ones of right. Babylon. So they made a decree that everybody has to bow down to the mighty ones of Babylon. And if they don't, that by nightfall, they should die. They should be thrown into the lion's den. Right. Okay. So, so whoever's in the, whoever, whoever's in the palace where the king lives is considered the upper echelon. Yeah, they're but, the enemy of Babylon's rulers. Right, exactly. So 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 um so anyways, so they don't do nothing to the so uh to the lower people, to the peasants, what they call back then the peasants. Okay, right. they only take the, the, the top. So anyways in 1975 a clean bula uh, a clay bula purportedly containing Baruch's seal and name appeared on the antiquities market. Its purchaser, a prominent Israeli collector, permitted Israeli archaeologist Nachman Avigad to publish the Bula, although its source is not definitively known. It has been identified as coming from the Burt House excavated by Yigal Shiloh. The Bula is now an Israel museum. Museum. It measures 17 by 16. Do, if I can explain, they get a corn husk, a large corn husk, and they'll dry it out and glaze it and sand down the back part, and they'll cut it in, you know, whatever size you want, and they would carve this stuff on it and they would use it to put the wax on a, on a scroll and then seal the seal with that seal. The bula is a seal, right? Okay. 
and it's made of a corn husk, brother. Uh, <laughs> so, but the Romans used to use wood or something uh, fancy, you know. So you and I, back in those days, we can make our own bula from our yeah. tribe and our family or inherited from our father. And then when we, I wrote a letter to you, I would seal it. Right. So you know nobody else tampered with the letter. And when you wrote right. a letter to me, you seal it with wax too. That no one tampered with it or added or took away. You, you follow yeah. what I'm saying? And he was doing yeah. this for Yemiyahu as a scribe. So it was found in Yegel Shalom, is now yeah. in the Israel Museum. The stamp in the oval seal, the inscription. Now look at what it says here, people. Ibri mm -hmm. belonging to Berika Yahu. Son of Neriyahu, the scribe. And that there's a fingerprint on the corner. Ain't that something? Yeah. <laughs> he accidentally touched it with his finger. This is wonderful. Now, let me show you another one. It's very important I add this to the videos, right? Now, yeah. the problem is in here, they try to say that Yahoo is an epithet. Using Yahoo in a name added to Baruch is an epithet. That means a nickname. You know, of That's because they don't want you to know the name of the father. That's they don't want you to know the name of the father. How dare they do such a thing, you know? So here's another document. And uh, it says the same thing, but it adds a little more. And according to Josephus now, Baruch was a Jewish Esterkrat, son of Neri, brother of Zeriah, ben Neria, chamberman of King Zedekiah in Yehuda. Baruch be became the scribe of the Nabi, Yemiyahu, and it goes on and on. The date here was eight, 587 to 586. Middle siege of Jerusalem, and Yemiyahu purchased the state. Here what it is. He purchased a state in Anothoth, on which the Babylon armies had encamped. As a symbol of Emonah and eventually restoration of Jerusalem, according to Yosef, the father literally told him to buy this house and wait for the captivity. Wow. You know what I mean? He literally told him to do that. So uh, he was safe. The father knew where he's safe. And the reason I brought this up is this. The father knows where we're going to be safe. Right. He knows where we're going to be safe and see the destruction at a distance. You know what I mean? He knows right. exactly where we need to be, and he's going to put us right where we need to be. He's going to tell us where to be. And, he, you know, he, I mean, Yahweh was like, he was a Nabi. The father provided him the money to buy the, the house. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the father, I believe the reason I brought it up, because I believe the father will do that for us eventually at the right time and place. Here's another picture. Let me find another one. Here's another one. Wow. All this is in, in, in Google. Okay. All this is on That's Google awesome. Image. That's that's ancient Hebrew right there, man. Yeah, is that is that ancient modern paleo. Hebrew people? Tell me, is that modern Hebrew? <laughs> no, it's not. That's ancient that's Paleo Hebrew. That's right. And that was the language of our forefathers. That's right. All right. Now let me go to back to where we're at. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, there's another one. The guy printed it, and so you can see the letters better in Paleo. Yeah. Great pictures. All right. Yes. This is where we're at. And this is some heavy stuff we're about to read, brother. I'm excited, but we're about to read, right. man. Yeah, chapter 10, man. And it came to pass after seven days that the word of Eloah came to me and said to me, tell Yermiyahu to go and support the captivity of the people of Abel, uh, but, do, but do remain here amid the desolation of Zion. And I will show to you after these days what will befall at the end of days. 
and I, at the end of days, which I believe is where we're at now. And I said to Yahu as Yahuwah commanded me, and he indeed departed with the people. But I, Baruch, returned and sat before the gates of the temple, and I lamented with the following lamentation over Zion and said, Baruch. Stop there he... for a minute. So he tells Yemiyahu to go to Babylon, support no. the people, and I will stay here. Right. With the destruction. Right. And right. you got to remember that this scroll, it said, and we read Baruch 1, was supposed to be read at Shabbat like the Torah. Let this be read during Shabbat Torah reading. But yet the rabbinical Jews keep it from the their shuls. They won't read it. For uh, Baruch. You're talking about the whole book of Baruch? Yeah. Yeah. They won't read yeah, it. To remind the people. To remind yeah. the people what happened. That it was that it was Yahuwah who Allah, who who brought it down. And, and it says, and I lamented with the following lamentation over Zion and said, verse number six, Baruch is he who, who was not born or he who having been born has died. Wow. Verse seven, but as for us who live, woe to us because we see the afflictions of Zion and what has befallen Yerushalayim. Verse number eight, I will call the... I will call the Syrian, the Syrian, the Sirens, the Syrians? Sirens, the brother. Mermaids. I will call the, oh, the, the wicked sirens mermaids, the, the demonic mermaids of the sea. And ye, and ye Lilin, come ye from the desert, and ye Shadim, and the dragons from the forest. Stop that for a minute, man. Wow. This so is these, were, these animals stuff, were brother. alive back then. These yeah. uh, animals were living, or oh, these beings, these uh, I'm gonna say animal, not uh, these beasts or whatever they are, right? Yeah, and we know the there's fishermen. There's in Google in Google image. There's fishermen. They get these big nets, and these sirens are caught with the fish, and they 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 have this sharp like knife, and they cut the net, and it's metal. The nets are metal. They just slice it and jump in the water. They got video footages of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're the ones underneath the ocean. They won't mess with it. You know, they're still alive. That's why Yahushua said, every knee shall bow. Everything above, below the earth, in the sea. Yeah. Every knee is wow. going to bow, you know? Wow. I will call the sirens from the sea and ye lilin. What is lilin? Lilin is the night spirit. It's the terror, it's the same word for terror by night in the night of her psalms. It's the tormenting spirit that makes you suffocate in a dream. Oh wow. Well, uh, is it the spirit that makes you like paralyzed? Yeah, you and it says move? it says where it comes from. It comes from the desert. Wow, from the dry place. Dry places. And you Sadim Sadim. That is uh, another type of spirit that causes people to worship and make sacrifice of children to it. Wow. And and the dragons from the forest <laughs> awake and gird up your loins to morning and take up with me the the dirges and the and make lamentation with me. Yeah, it's a poetic hymn, exactly. Exactly like like a like a, like a dirges is like this. So it has grief, like lamentation, and make lamentation with me. Uh, verse number nine: Ye husbandmen, sow not again, and O earth, wherefore give you your harvest? Give you your harvest fruit. Keep within you the sweets of your substance, and you vine. Why further do you give your wine? For an offering will not again be made therefrom in, therefrom in Zion, nor will the first fruits again be offered. And do ye, O Shamaim, again be offered? And do ye, O 
and do ye, O Shamayim, withhold your due and open not the treasuries of rain? Uh, verse number 12. And do, O son, and do, O sun, withhold the light of your rays, and do, O moon, extinguish the multitude of your light? For why should light rise again where the light of Zion is darkened? And you, ye bridegrooms, enter not in, and let not the brides adorn themselves with garlands. And ye women, pray not that ye may bear, for the barren shall, ab shall above all rejoice, and those who have no sons shall be glad, and those who have sons shall have anguish. For why, why should they bear in pain? only to bury in grief? And why again should mankind have sons? Or why should the seed of their kind again be named where this mother is desolate and her sons are led into captivity? From this time forward, speak not of beauty and discourse not of gracefulness. Verse number 18. Moreover, ye priests, take ye the keys of the sanctuary and cast them into the height of, of Shamaim and give them to Yahuwah and say, guard your house yourself for lo, we are found false stewards and ye and you, ye virgin, virgins who weave fine linen and silk with gold of Ophir take with haste all these things and cast them into the fire that it may be bear them to him who made them and the flame send them to him who created them lest the enemy get possession of them possession of them where uh, moreover i baruch say this against you babel if you had pro prospered and zion had dwelt in her esteem yet the grief of this of us had been great that you should be equal to Zion. But now, lo, the grief is infinite and the lamentation measureless. For lo, you are prospered and Zion desolate. Who will be, ju who will be judged regarding these things? Or to whom shall we complain regarding that which has befallen us? O Yahuwah, how have you borne it, our fathers, went to rest without grief and lo the righteous sleep in the earth in tranquility now wait a minute you. wait a minute no 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 according to Roberto Goyuri, uh you're reincarnated that's right <laughs> not no, you don't sleep in the in the earth with your fathers our fathers our fathers went to rest without grief and lo the righteous sleep in the earth in tranquility for they knew not this anguish nor yet had they heard of that which had befallen us. Would that would that you had had ears, O earth, and that you had a heart, O dust, and that you might go and announce in Sheol and say to the dead, Baruch are you more than those who live. But in verse number uh, chapter number twelve. But I will say. This as I think, and I will speak against you, O land, which are prospering, and the noonday does not always burn, nor do the rays of the sun constantly give light. Do not expect and hope that you will always be prosperous and rejoicing, and be not gratefully uplifted and boastful, for assuredly, in its own season shall the divine wrath awake against you, which now in long suffering is held in as it were by rains. And when I had said these things, I fasted seven days. Now, this is the that second fast. You notice I got a number. The first fast is when they mourned and tore their garments. The second right. fast is seven days. Now, he's going to go through a series of fasts for seven days. And then the messengers are going to keep appearing to him and answering his questions and prayers. We're going to do one more chapter, and then we're going to open the floor for people to add 
or share or question the things we read. Go ahead and read the next chapter, brother. Okay. Uh, verse no, Chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that I, Baruch, was standing upon Mount Zion, and lo, a voice came from the height and said to me, Stand upon your feet, Baruch, and hear the word of Eloah, be, because you have been astonished at what has been has befallen Zion. You shall therefore be assuredly preserved to the consummation of times that you may be for a testimony, so that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has El Eloah brought upon us this retribution? Say to them, you and those like you who shall have seen this evil. This is the evil and the retribution which is com which is coming upon you and upon your people in its destined time, in its destined time, that the nations may be thoroughly smitten, and then they shall be in anguish. Uh, verse number seven, and if they say at that time, for how long, you will say to them, ye who have drunk the strained wine, drink ye also its, dre its dregs. The judgment of the lofty one who has no respect of persons, on his account, he had aforetime no um compassion mercy compassion no compassion on his own sons but afflicted them as his enemies because they sinned uh, verse number 10 then therefore were they chastened and they that they might be sanctified that uh made clean made whole but now ye peoples and nations ye are guilty because ye have always trodden down the arets and used the creation unrighteously. You hear that? I, yeah, and use the creation unrighteously. For I have always benefited you, and ye have always been ungrateful for the for the, for the beneficence. That's the end of 13, brother. So people take for granted everything that Yahuwah has given us. You know, and we do, we really do take for granted, even now. I mean, you know, I mean, we lived in such a Baruch place. I mean, I mean, we, Yahuwah has fed us and given us everything that we wanted, has given us wealth. I mean, we don't have to go out and hunt for our food. It's right there in the grocery store, you know, and you have these people protesting as if they're being, as if they're being um, punished. As if they, if there's something, uh, you know, uh, uh, going against them that they have a right to, to protest. You know, when you have when you have children in Africa and in South America dying of starvation. You know, uh, people even in the European countries, uh, in, especially in the old um, Soviet Union countries, the old Warsaw Pact countries, who barely have food to eat. I mean, remember that and in the Middle East, you have the Yemenites who are on the brink of, star of starvation. Exterminating the Yemenite Yehudis. Right, right. And 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 there, there's so many people that are on the brink of starvation, but yet we have our own children here who have not known none of that and have totally taken all of this for granted. But they're about to find out. They're going to lose... This generation will lose this country. It is losing this, and has lost this country. Okay, it's already done. The damage, the desolation, the destruction, just like the 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 dream and uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had that the uh, that the feet were made of clay and and iron, which do not mix. These cultures here in the United States that are all here, there's a bunch of cultures here who uh, uh, that that do not mix, and this thing is a powder keg, and it's about to explode, and it's going to explode, and this this nation is coming down. You know, Bo and I, we watch some documentaries. We saw that we watched in Vietnam how how many bombs we dropped every day, tons of bombs. 
and all the months, and they made boats out of the drop tanks. They, they melt the, the, the metal and make spoons, plates, cups to make a living. And they said 50 years later, they're still fighting stuff in the jungle. You know what I mean? To, yeah. Of all that was dropped on them in Laos, and they li- make a living. Now, when I saw that, I said, you know what will really hurt this generation? They don't know how to put a seed in the ground in the right time and just, or how to put a seed in a pot at the right time and then plant it at the right time for food. They don't know how to use a nail and a hammer. They don't know how to mix cement. They don't even know how to make cement or adobe bricks like they do in oh, really? Africa. Though. They know how to use a computer. That's it. And all the power is going to be out. They're going to know. How do we make yeah. it? Look it on YouTube. The computer's not working. <laughs> you right. know? So I want to open the floor right now to anybody that wants to add. And we'll continue in Chapter 14 when we come back next week. Well, one thing I thought was interesting is uh, when it was talking about the monsters, drawing monsters out of the sea. Uh, I forgot what verse that was, but it was how he's going to call so-and-so from the sea and Lilith from the desert. And it reminded me of in Bereshith. He created those sea sea monsters and the birds. Yeah. They're among the first creations. That's right. uh, There's something that's down there that's that's hidden and that I don't I don't want to know what it is, you know. I don't want to come face to face with what's described there, you know. Yeah. You don't want to I don't want to find out either. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting, but you know, it's kind of a second witness where you can go back to Bereshith and you can see, well, he did create it says that he created all the sea, the great sea creatures, everything that moves, uh the every winged bird. So, just wanted to throw that in. And you know, so let like, me ask you let me let me ask you something, brother Richard. What do you think about when it says that he's bringing these these dragons from the forest and these these uh all these creatures when you do you think that that they attacked Jerusalem also did he call them to attack Jerusalem wow it's a possibility think about that. yeah yeah that 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 image was in my mind that wow okay did King Nebuchadnezzar's army actually defeat these people, or did Yahuwah call? Dra- I mean, it says he called dragons out of the forest <laughs> to come to Yerushalayim. Yeah, and Lord I Jesus. think those those stories, you know, that we'll we'll think they're like a Lord of the Rings or a Harry Potter. Like those ideas came from some source at some time. You know, they're based right. on something, right? So, and you know, like when Russia. When Russia um, sent divers, I don't know, they sent all, oh, they sent the first, they sent a submarine and the, they, they bored a hole. There's a, there's a big lake under the Antarctic, a certain area, and there's fish in there no one has seen, and they've been taking pictures and all that. Well, they sent these two or two to three divers. They went down there in a submarine, and from the submarine, when they got down there, the pressure was normal like at a hundred feet instead of a thousand feet right? right so the pressure was different and the and there was it was not salt water it was right. fresh water and the, when the, they, the lord speaks about that go, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry, and then when the divers went out one was killed and i think one was i don't remember only one got up alive but he said this this octopus spoke to him and looked at him and told him, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know? Uh-huh. And, he, and he sent the message to the everybody above, don't come here. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. this creature that looked at him, spoke to him, he said there was no audible because he's in a suit. He's in a huge pressurized suit. It spoke to his inner being and he brought the men and they sealed it. They never went back in that water again. Uh, I'm excited about reading this because 
it's amazing how much when we read these chapters, you're going to see messengers appear to him. He's, right. there, he's going to ask their name and he's going to tell their name and you're going to tell them where, what part they have done that's found in the scriptures other than Baruch. Because in the other parts of the scriptures in, in Malak um, uh, 1 and 2, as well as, you know, Chronicles or whatever, uh, that names messengers but don't name their names. Now, the Yehudi say, they say they took the names out of the scriptures so that people would not try to fast, pray, and summons them. Okay? Because that's what Baruch did. He did one appear to him, uh, the one that gives revelation of understanding of, of dreams and writings. So he fasted seven days and asked the Father to send him. He didn't ask the angel, the messenger. He asked the Father to send him back to him to ask, answer more questions. That's their excuse for keeping this book out. You're going to see a lot of good stuff. You want to read it ahead of us? Fine. Read it ahead of us so you can help us with the, with the message. While we're sharing, you might spot things we don't spot. And you might be able to, uh, to see things that we haven't seen. And what we have recorded and note, you notice that I've marked in red certain things there. <laughs> so everybody can see it. Uh, and more, uh, it alerts me. That's why I got it beside me and I got it on the screen. Uh, we alerts me of the different things I found. If you found something when you're reading it before we read next week, openly in the recording, if you underline it and want to bring it up, please do. Okay. And uh, praise Yah, hallelujah. Anybody else before we close in prayer? Uh, I think my wife wanted to. I mean, I'm cooking, but I just I put a scripture in there because it made me think um, when Sister Veronica was speaking earlier before we started recording about we all want to be righteous. And I just kept seeing that scripture working out our deliverance, salvation with reverence. Yeah. You know, that that's in the word that it, that it's OK. You know, we want to strive to be perfect in heart. We, we all all the code of shame are desiring to be righteous. But then so I wouldn't found the scripture. So I just posted it in the chat. Right. Of course, in English, in King James, it says, for you, she warming the food up from yesterday. Yeah. But it's yeah, terror. I mean, yeah, I'm just heating up the food from last night. Good. That's good. And yeah. uh and you know what, there's a problem with us, and like Veronica was saying earlier, there's a problem with us when we get, uh, what should we say, uh, content or apathy or so comfortable, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Bia right. and I always pray, well, Father, we've been here a year, now what? We're now going on two years, what do you want to do from here? What do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? You know? Right. And, uh, so... We don't want to get so comfortable. We always want to beat our breast to say, Father, forgive us, cleanse us, but yet help us not do it no more. We're trembling and respect and reverence and to cry out, of course, for our children and grandchildren. That's the biggest thing right now, of course, for all of us, for our children and grandchildren to come to that place to have their personal relationship which they have to have their personal experience. They got their own experience, like we had our own experience. This is Telehim 136. It says, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is tov, for his kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to Yahuwah of mighty ones, for his kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the master of masters, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who alone does great wonders, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who by Hokma made the Shemayaim, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who spread the earth on the waters, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who made great lights, for his kindness is everlasting. The sun to rule by day, for his kindness is everlasting. The moon and stars to rule, to rule by night, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who smote Mitzarim and their firstborn, for his kindness is everlasting. And brought out of Yisrael from their midst, for his kindness is everlasting. 
with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who split apart the sea of reeds, for his kindness is everlasting. And made Yisrael pass through the midst of it, for his kindness is everlasting. But shook off Pharaoh and his army in the sea of reeds, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his kindness is everlasting. To him who smote great sovereigns, for his kindness is everlasting. And slew mighty sovereigns, for his kindness is everlasting. Even Sihon, sovereign of the Amorites, for his kindness is everlasting. And Og, sovereign of Bashan, for his kindness is everlasting. And gave their land as an inheritance, for his kindness is everlasting. An inheritance to Yisrael, his servant, for his kindness is everlasting. Who remembered us in our humiliation, for his kindness is everlasting. And rescued us from our adversaries, for his kindness is everlasting. Who gives food to all flesh, for his kindness is everlasting. Give Torah, give thanks to Yahuwah of the Shemayim, for his kindness is everlasting. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Hallelujah. 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 So be a place to keep words softly in the background. I continue to pray that you, your growth would exceed beyond measure, that we would all die daily and of the flesh and live daily. And we are assured, as the Father told Baruch to tell Yemiyahu to go to to Babylon and I stay here and the father told him ahead of time to buy a piece of property in a different location away from the, where the chaos was going to be father we just close in prayer that Baruch everybody right now that heard this message they're going to hear this message on YouTube that your anointing would be upon them in the ship of Yeshua that they would be touched they would be have a desire to buy these books and to read them and study them and, and experience the revelation and the stillness and the light of understanding of this missing books that they are not forbidden but they're told for us to read on the Shabbat and we ask you to Baruch everybody we have a brother that's in the hospital right now just had open surgery and we pray for you, Joe, right now. As other brothers are around his bed and they're praying for him, and I pray right now for healing virtue to come in there to heal the wounds of the surgery that was done in his heart and the arteries and to restore his health completely and bring healing into his body. In the Shem of Yahushua Mashiach, we pray this for Brother Joe. And other people, Sister Carmen, and, and other people that are, have family members that are sick, and, and the hospital, Sister Esther, and others, that we pray for their family, and we pray for them. 
Some need healing in their body right now. So we pray an agreement for their bodies to be healed by the stripes of Yoshua. And that healing virtue will come from above and touch them. In the Shem of Yoshua, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We pray for a miracle working virtue to go forth. In the Shem of Yoshua, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I mean, and I mean.